In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, God. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, this weekend, we remember in a special way, our beloved mothers, both living and dead, for their love and the caring that, you know, they showed it to us uh, from our infancy up to this time. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, our God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we receive in remembrance, we may always hold it to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up saying, get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, in truth, I see that God shows no partiality, rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. 
the responsorial psalm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into songs. Sing praise. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you and no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good evening once again. Uh, the theme we have for this uh, sixth Sunday of Easter is love. It's a very familiar uh, theme, love. Even the little ones know about love. So tonight I'll be preaching about the obvious, but more especially I'll uh, preach about how Jesus interpreted this concept of love, not the way we know it. So as we heard in the gospel tonight, Jesus says, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. And also in the second reading, St. John, in his letter, he writes, I quote, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son in the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. End of quote. And then he concludes, beloved, let us love one another because God is love. So what does John mean by God is love? And why does he conclude that God is love? John had looked at what Jesus did and he saw that Jesus was one who went all along doing good things, one who practiced self-denial and poverty for our sake, one who had compassion on the multitude, especially when they felt hungry and he multiplied bread for them to eat. He saw Jesus as one who showed sympathy for the bereaved, one who showed kindness towards the outcast, one who shed tears at the grave of Lazarus, one who had the message of forgiveness to the prostitute who was about to be stoned to death, one who washed the feet of his disciples at the Last Supper, one who rose from the dead and greeted his disciples, saying, Peace be with you, O Shalom. So John recalled all these and other events and concluded by saying, Beloved, let us love one another because God is love. So he invites us to respond to the love of God by loving one another. Jesus, too, in the gospel repeats the same invitation when he says, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Just love as I have loved you. This last phrase is very important. Remember that time the Jewish love said, Eye to eye, a, teeth for te a tooth for tooth, meaning do good to those who do good to you and evil to those who do evil to you. But Jesus didn't do like that. He loved even his enemies. Remember, he forgave and prayed for those who were persecuting and killing him, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So this is how Jesus loved. And he says, love one another as I have loved you. Meaning your love should extend, should be extended to your enemies. And he says, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends, to be ready to suffer for others. If I love, then I should not be envious, jealous, or prideful. I should hate hotness injustice, evil thoughts, wrongdoings, wrong desires, unkind and ungenerous words. If I love, I should think no evil, I should wish no harm, I should do no wrong, I should not give to falsehood, fault finding or suspicion. I should not promote dissension, I should not disseminate rumors if I love. 
Instead, I should be kind, gentle, and peaceable, considerate, forbearing, forgiving injuries, casting the mount of charity over infirmities. I should heal divisions, soften asperities, remove alienations, promote friendships, put far away unholy feelings, and bring all people to associate together as members of the common human family. I believe this is what Jesus means when he says, love one another as I have loved you. Now, directly opposed to love is hatred. It is good that we speak about a little about this vice of hatred so that we know how to distinguish it from uh, love. Hatred is separates us interiorly from our neighbor. It not only for, forgets every duty toward them, but positively wishes them evil. When directly directed towards the person of our neighbor, hatred is always a grievously sinful. But here we have to be clear. If hatred is directed towards someone's bad qualities, it may be without sin. For bad qualities are intrinsically evil and deserve to be hated. But this kind of hatred not unusually passes from bad qualities to the person and is then sinful. Hatred grieves at the prosperity and rejoices at the adversity of the hated person. It exaggerates his fault and discounts his virtues. It wishes evil, does evil to them. It does not stop at malediction, calumny, and detraction, but often assails his very life. Hence, the Holy Scripture says, I quote, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, end of quote. And elsewhere it says, if a man says he loves God and hates his neighbor, he is a liar. So that is hatred, and it is the arch enemy of love, and we have to avoid it. Lord, inflame in our hearts with the fire of your love, that we may love you and our neighbors as we should. Keep away from us any feeling of hatred that our love may be sincere always. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before our ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified and upon to spirit, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the gift of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. <laughs> 
Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name will be granted. Therefore, let us place our needs before God in the name of Jesus. That those are searching for faith in a chaotic world encounter Christ in every member of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations cooperate to develop compassion, immigration policies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That mothers everywhere recognize the gift of their children and nurture them with joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That children cherish their mothers always, but especially over this Mother's Day weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gathered here see the face of Jesus in one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intention that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for the names entered into our book of intentions, and for the soul of Patricia Colin Busky, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Triune God, we feel your presence in our lives. Draw us closer to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, and grant our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of the Holy Church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread it throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Eduardo, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As the Savior is commanded and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it to you, apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious will grant Amen. the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Um, we have one announcement this weekend. Um, the Knights of Columbus are selling raffle tickets after all masses. Please help in supporting their many charities. Uh, because this weekend we are celebrating uh, Mother's Day, may I invite all mothers here present to stand up for a special blessing. All mothers, please. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please, all of you, stand up for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who brought about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Thank you for coming to this Mass, and I wish you a blessed week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.